Good evening and welcome to another episode of Youth Pulse. Through the compliments of the Government Information Service, Youth Pulse is a program brought to you by the National Youth Council of Dominica and seeks to provide you with your weekly youth news and to serve as a platform for expression, education and encouragement for the young people of Dominica. This evening, I am your host, Prisca Julian. We will return after this short break with your youth news. Did you know the Caribbean Court of Justice is two courts in one? The CCJ has two functions, an original jurisdiction, which deals with your right to move between CARICOM countries freely and your right to move your money and your business. This is the basis of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, and the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, and an appellate jurisdiction to hear appeals from courts of those countries which decide to use it as their final court of appeal and no longer go to the Privy Council. All CARICOM member states who have signed the agreement establishing the CCJ are members of the CCJ. Welcome back to Youth Balls. We start as usual with our youth news segment. As a great example for youth who are seeking to change their communities for the better by helping the young people of that community, we recognize the anti-drug program initiative undertaken by the Kalinago Youth Representative attached to the NYCD, Ms. Natasha Green. Ms. Green embarked on this program as she explained from the great need of it in the Kalinago territory. In her written statement, Ms. Green says that despite the potential to impede the productive use of young men in particular, there are currently no existing programs specifically directed at youth to address this concern. Ms. Green also says that without the necessary strategies to curb the problem, Inevitably, the Kalinago community will face the threat of having an unproductive youthful population to fill future leadership roles given the destructive potential of alcohol and other illicit drugs. In speaking with Ms. Green, we learned on some of the specific ways in which the program would become a source of outreach and target the drug-related problems in her area. The program is aimed at raising awareness on drug use, abuse and the related health issues um, to reinforce the laws as it relates to selling alcohol to minors, to identify illicit outlets, um, sale of illicit drugs in the Caribbean territory, to encourage the police to take a more proactive approach on drugs in the Kalinago territory and to implement an anti-drug club in the community at some point of the program. The program is targeted mainly at Kalinago youth in order to preserve our young people, um, to reduce the negative implications for the future of our young people in the Kalinago territory. The anti-drug program will be implemented as a three-month program to help raise awareness on the issue of drug abuse among Kalinago youth and Ms. Green says the response so far has been a favorable one. The response was very good and hopefully we intend to work with them as well from the, at the school level. This program will take place in collaboration with the Ministry of Kalinago Affairs, local police, Kalinago Council, the National Youth Council of Dominica, and the District Drug Prevention Officer, Ms. Leandra Coffey, who we also spoke to about the program. One of the activities that really highlighted the issue of some substance use and abuse was a grand rally that was organized and which involved students from all of the primary schools spanning um, all the way to Concord. And um, I must say this was a very well um, patronized event. I think the response was tremendous and um, not only did the school show up but they all had presentations where they um, expressed their, 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 their views about drug, drug use and abuse in various forms. Miss Coffey also encourages the young people of the Kalinago territory to take pride in who they are and to not allow harmful drugs to destroy their youth. You 
are valuable. You are beautiful. You have a lot going for you. You have educational opportunities. You have a lot of things that are going for you. You are better than a spliff, a fix, a shot of a shot of rock. Okay? You should not become powerless to these substances. You have value. Do not make outsiders come into your community and bring these substances to your communities and to drag you down. We, you need to reclaim your communities. You need to reclaim your lives. You are beautiful people. You are the first persons who actually, um, you, you have a big stick in, in, in Dominica, right? So you have to do that with, with um, pride and dignity and, 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 and drinking your life away, smoking your life away, snorting your life away. It's, it's just meaningless. Kalinago Youth Representative Miss Natasha Green had some words of advice for her fellow young people. As a young person, I'd like to make a special appeal to the young people of the Kalinago Territory to get involved in this program. To get on board, no matter what contribution you can make, no matter how small it is, it might go a long way in making the program successful. The anticipated outcome for this project includes fear of punishment, for indulging in illicit activity due to interaction with the police, increased awareness of the effects of alcohol and other drugs on the future indigenous population, gradual change in risky behavior among youth, and increased parental supervision of children below the age of 18, as well as reduced availability and distribution of illicit drugs in the community. Junior Achievement Dominica is proud to be continuing its Junior Achievement Company program. This program is in an effort to help develop young entrepreneurs and foster the culture of entrepreneurship among the youth of Dominica. Mrs. Natasha Labad, the Executive Director at Junior Achievement, says the program is one which can help young people to achieve economic success. So the Junior Achievement Program is a program that focuses um, its support on entrepreneurial youth. And that's anyone who is within the age of 8 and 24 who has an idea, a small business idea. The Junior Achievement Company Program provides that student or that those groups of students with an opportunity to try out the entrepreneurial venture while they are still in the safety of the classroom. Um, in Jupiter, in fact, we work with at school or school-aged youth, whether they're in school or out of school. And we have an opportunity to capture um, some of the um, feedback from some of our students who do the company program. And um, a number of the students realize that the opportunity to learn about starting a business and um, starting a concept from scratch is something that they may not necessarily have an opportunity to do in the classroom. The classroom focuses on the theory, the academics of you know, business. With the company program, is the real world you know, experience that is the focus of the GA program. Upon our visit to Junior Achievement, where there was an ongoing session with some participants of the Junior Achievement Company program, we were able to hear what they think the program has benefited them. I joined the Junior Achievement Company because I think that it is a great opportunity to prepare me for the world of In the J Company, I have learned to cope with other students I have learned the challenges that other companies face while they are choosing the product and the name of the company. At the end of the day, we agree with one name and one product. Right now, if it wasn't for the J company, I wouldn't have the courage to speak on the social media. And I thank the J company for that. I learned how to do a lot of things within this program, such as how a meeting will really run, like what you will feel like. And I learned how to cooperate with each other to actually make a, pro a product. The Junior Achievement Program is currently focusing on three main areas, which are entrepreneurial skills, financial literacy, and skills for the workforce. Ms. Labad says 
it is important that the different sectors do invest in the future of our youth. We want to encourage corporate Dominica um, and even our local partners to invest in a young person. You know, we always say, and this, this is something that if you receive um, a request for support, you're going to find somewhere in the junior achievement team that we believe that if we do not invest in young persons, we have no moral right to criticize them or castigate them for not, you know, aligning with our social laws or value systems. We have to be willing to support them, whether it is through mentorship, whether it is through enabling them with the right environment or financially. Other young people who are interested in developing their business plans and gaining entrepreneurial skills and training may visit the Office of the Junior Achievement to join the program. We do have more youth news for you coming up next, but we take a short break, a video break also related to the Junior Achievement of Dominica. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Woo! Yeah! Can you believe we get paid for this? Did you see those pictures? Nah, I'm too good. It's only Monday. Excited about what you do? Well, pass it on. As a JA volunteer, you could bring your enthusiasm to the classroom and give a few kids a little something to be excited about. Let their future be your inspiration and share a little something of yourself by being a JA volunteer today. In more youth news, 12-year-old Jaheen Pierre of Meru came up with the idea of developing an app called Indigo Chat with a friend who he says is also his manager, Tarek Victor, and who is also 12 years of age. Mr. Pierre believes that his app is much better than the other popular messaging apps due to the amount of privacy given on his. He believes privacy is a principal factor when it comes to the use of social media. Mr. Pierre informed us that he came up with the idea when the lack of privacy became an issue for his friend. It has a very famous and popular app on the Dominican market. market. It is the In The Good Chat and so far, as of 5.30 this morning, on our watch strategy, we have over 754 people who, are, who downloaded, downloaded um, the In The Good Chat app and many more is expected to be downloaded. And of course, we will closely use Telegram because, of course, that is one of the most trusted uh, messaging app as well as Indigo. And we work together very closely to um, have Indigo done, which is working well. And personally, I believe that Indigo is a great success because it secures your privacy and um, also upholds privacy. And privacy is our main principle. And um, of course, if um, we do whatever we want with your privacy. Um, we can be charged and sued. That's why we secure your privacy and we ensure that you and your messages are always private. And of course, in the good chat is of course growing. In, um, of course, we are not planning on selling our company currently, uh, and we are planning on updating it um, by November. A new update will come with the video call and the voice call. A new update will come. Um, among that, there are many new updates to come, I must say, and we are start working on the programs. <laughs> yes, and when I get back to school, along with my new chief programmer, I have a new chief programmer, and I believe that we should not review his name as yet, but if, along with my new chief programmer, um, we are going to make um, some really, really good updates. Jahim says, that his innovation and accomplishment is a testimony that youth can get things done and he encourages them to go for the goal all the time. This is just a testimony that youth in it too. Youth can do things. Youth can be what they ought to be. Right? So to the youth out there, you know, never give up. Whatever the challenge may be, you may face some critics, just take out the critics and then just go. Um, your goal in front of you and then you must achieve and you will be successful. We'll keep you updated on this story on other platforms of the National Youth Council of Dominica. The National Cooperative Credit Union launches its Youth Week which will run from April 20th to the 25th. 
the Youth Week will involve a number of competitions and events geared specifically for young people. Junior marketing clerk Ms. Monique Jeffrey briefed us on the different competitions forming part of the Youth Week. The NCC is holding a Youth Week from April 20th to the 25th on the theme Wild About Savings and Youth to encourage youth membership and savings. To commemorate that week, we are having three competitions for youth. So the three competitions, the first one we have is for primary schoolers. It's an art competition under that same theme, Wild About Savings, for which the deadline is Tuesday, April 14th. For that competition, the entries must be on a manual sheet, but it can be of any medium. The deadline, as we said, is the 14th of April, and uh, the prizes is the first prize, $400, the second prize, $250, and the third prize is $150. There will be consolation prizes, and uh, the school also, the winning participant, will receive a prize. NCCU launches a series of events and competitions in an effort to encourage youth savings as they believe it is extremely important to cultivate a behavior savings and financial stability. To encourage youth membership here at the NCCU and youth savings because that's very important in the cooperative society. We need people to save so that they can be able to give out to other people and also, and also it's important just to save on a personal level so that people can have a pool of funds for themselves and so they know they want to do things or save for retirement, which is very important. So we want to encourage people from a young age to get into that habit. Parents are encouraged to have their children take part in the competition and help them get started with the practice of savings at an early age. The Dominica Youth Business Trust held its board and staff retreat on the weekend of March 27th to the 28th where they were able to examine the way forward and put together new programs for the young persons who they serve. Ms. Carrie Ann Remy, who is the new coordinator of the Youth Business Trust, says the retreat was productive in accomplishing all the goals which were set out for the retreat. The retreat basically was to acquaint the new board, we have a new board and we have some new staff members and myself is a new, the new coordinator in terms of getting ourselves more familiar with the policies and procedures of the Dominican Business Trust. We also examine the way forward in terms of our approach to the Dominican Business Trust and the programs that they offer. We also examine our strategic plan, um, revised it and upgraded it so we can provide better and efficient service to our young persons. Um, part of the retreat also took um, the GW, Global Entrepreneurship Week in November. We examined what are the activities and programs that we are going to implement during that, that week of activities. So we have some upcoming exciting activities for young persons during the week of GW. Ms. Remy also informed us of the upcoming development program open for young entrepreneurs. On the 13th of April, the Dominican Business Trust will be hosting its ninth entrepreneurial development program. The program really goes in two parts. The first week we have a residential from the 13th to the 17th at the Cabrick National Park. That um, aspect really deals with the young person in terms of developing their leadership skills, their identifying their traits in their personality, um, demonstrating and discovering their entrepreneurial spirit. So that week is at the Cabrits and then for three weeks after, which is going to be at the Public Service Union Conference Room, deals more with the meat of being an entrepreneur in terms of marketing, in terms of developing a business plan. They will be interfacing with successful business persons. They will also be um, interfacing with institutions that will impact their business in terms of social security, the human revenue, environmental health. So that's what we have upcoming. The training is organized and coordinated by the DYB team, whose mandate is to empower youth in realizing their entrepreneurial potential by facilitating access to financial, technical, and social assistance geared towards the development of variable businesses, thereby contributing to the growth and development of the national economy. That was it for our youth news segment. We now take a short video break 
and we'll be right back to go into Pali Creole. The water cycle takes the water and moves it up and down and all around the earth. The water cycle takes the water and moves it up and down and all around the earth. The water cycle whoa, whoa. takes the water and moves it up and down and all around the earth. The water cycle whoa, whoa. takes the water and moves it up and down and all around the earth. Evaporation comes when the heat from the sun warms up all Welcome back to Youth Pulse. If you are just joining in, Youth Pulse is a program brought to you by the National Youth Council of Dominica, complements of the Government Information Service. Earlier, we brought you your youth news. For the week, now we join Mr. Rabes with Pali Creole. Welcome to the Creole segment of the NYC TV program. Bienvenue à section Creole là en programme télé NYC. Ça c'est Conseil national de la jeunesse Dominique. Uh, bon, l'autre quoi, après mes parties, nous avons parlé de comment nous avons salué les gens. Et puis, nous avons continué en sens ça là, nous avons uh, répété, ça nous a dit uh, dans le sens, mais nous avons allé plus, plus loin uh, à qui nous avons répondu. Nous avons dit que nous dit bonjour, bonjour, good day, good morning. Um, uh, ça qui est non, uh, what is your name, uh, comment vous êtes, how are you? Kuma uye, kuma uye. You know, there's a bit of subtle um, in this. How are you? Now, there are ways that we can answer to a question like this. Kuma uye. In Creole, we have different ways depending on, on the mood uh, we can answer. Uh, 
euh, une différente manière nous ça répond euh, les gens posent nos questions comment nous est par exemple euh, the person asks you or asks me euh, comment nous est um, then I would answer depend so so or I could answer tic or sometimes I could say uh, moins bien or sometimes I would say moins là uh, or sometimes I would say um, uh, if things are not so okay you could say kaboué duvan bef or you know it, it, things like that or if for example you are sort of regular in between you could say aunt lady okay so let's just um, back up on this again so 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 is like it's an english word so and so 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 that's that's that that you can't translate that really uh titak means a little bit so kumawe titak meaning is you know a little bit you're there and so on aunt lady means between the two now it means between the two extremes good and bad so aunt lady so by implication you don't have to say aunt lady uh, li mal li mauvais et les bon but you, it's implied in your answer so aunt lady so, and then you you the, the, when you when you answer to the one that says um, when they ask you okay comment ye and you says moi là there is I'm there. It means I am there. Moi là, I am there. But there's also implied um, uh, a response in there. It it could mean moi là, kachembe. I am there, hanging on. I am there, holding on. But it's implied in the idea of moi là. So when you say moi là, the person understands clearly that that's what you're actually saying that you're there but you're there who can change be when like a change be i am there holding on uh when they tell you again like uh, as i say kabwe duvan bef meaning the cat is in front of the cow it means things are not really going well your way and things are really back to front okay so we do have this nice funny um interesting ways that we can respond to a simple Kuma ouye in Creole. So, any different manier, nous sa we pon le on moun, mande ni on chèksyon, kuma ouye, and that kind of thing. We have another expression again, very common in Dominica, sakafet. You know, you meet somebody, first thing is sakafet. Now, sakafet literally translates into English as what's happening. Sakafet. What is happening? Of course, you can translate into what's up. What's up? And of course, right now we have WhatsApp on the mobile phones, but uh, WhatsApp, so it's Sakafet. In Guadalupe, we, we can say, uh, they say Kaufe, and in Martinique, and in Dominica, sometimes they say Saufe. So it's just subtle nuances in the way that you ask the same question based on the um, language variety in Martinique, Guadalupe. And in Haiti, for example, they say Sakpase, and Sakpase simply means the same thing, Sakafet, WhatsApp. And then in Haiti, for example, they even talk about ma uh, 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 meaning I'm shining. My clearly, I am shining. So they're very interesting ways, not just in the Dominican Creole, but in the wider Creole that's spoken in the Caribbean, where you have the answer to a very simple question, Kumawe. That just shows the richness, the extent, and the, the diversity of the Creole language um, as spoken in Dominica and in the uh, Caribbean. Merci en pile, ça c'est en lot section, deuxième section, euh, parler créole, euh, sous le programme télé euh, NYC, ça c'est Conseil National Jeunesse Dominique. C'était un plaisir, non, moi c'est Gregory Rabes, watch là, à la prochaine. I hope you have been catching a few new phrases or words on the last couple segments of Parler Creole. If you missed any part of it, we will be making the videos available to you on our YouTube channel and the NYCD website. We now join Ms. John Baptist and our guests for the Let's Talk segment of this week's show. Good evening viewers. Welcome to the Let's Talk segment of the Youth Pulse program. Tonight we are going to discuss volunteerism with two very dynamic young ladies and I will leave them to introduce themselves. Kayla Roberts. Hi, I'm Alicia John Baptist. During the course of the past two weeks, the Easter holidays, these two young ladies were volunteering at the National Youth Council. Ladies, I would like to know this. 
During the holidays, we know young people love to party and to read or read or to stay home and watch TV, sleep, go out. Why did you all volunteer, take up the initiative to volunteer at the council, Miss Roberts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, at first I was planning to stay home and relax since it wasn't so long. It wasn't such a long period. But Miss John Baptist here wanted me to volunteer and I decided to volunteer because I guess it would help me. Miss okay. Roberts putting me on the spot <laughs> and selling me out. Miss John Baptist, so I did you volunteer. My experience was very productive because I did not know how to do those things that they were doing at the office and I stood there, I learned, I took my time and saw what they were doing and I really enjoyed being at the office. Yes, and Miss Roberts, was, what was your experience? Then? My experience was great. I learned how to manage websites mm -hmm. in making a blog and news and so on mm -hmm. and also I learned to cooperate with others. Okay and we know that the National Youth Council have different areas. We know the men and females for, um, forum, we have the project officers, we have the media team etc. Where were you all volunteering specifically? Well we were volunteering in the media team, the telecommunication officer and also the administration officer. Okay. And what did you do with these officers? Well, with the administration officer, I answered calls if someone calls, and that helped me to be able to relax myself because normally I don't really like to speak on phone, but I got the hang of it and I did well. Also, in editing of different reports and stories. Okay, and Ms. John Baptist, you volunteered the same area as she. And what were you doing when you, while you were volunteering in these departments? We went out and passed certain emails or letters to other people who couldn't make it. Okay. And what were some of the difficulties that you faced working in the council volunteering for the first time? The difficulties that I faced was, was that I couldn't really re remember on what to do and it was a struggle to for me because I have school next week and I really pushed myself to try to remember what they showed us and how we have to do it. Okay, and Miss Roberts, obviously your difficulties differentiate from hers. What, are your dif what were the difficulties that you faced? Okay, I faced one difficulty which was not being able to do as much as I wanted in one day, mm -hmm. but however it helped me in managing my time. Okay, um, what other organizations are you involved in? I'm involved in the Kaliawe Youth Choir and Youth Group at my church, mm -hmm. also the 11 Frozen Girls Guide mm -hmm. and the Juniors Achievers. Okay, and what did you learn at the council office that you can take back to your organization? Okay, I learned discipline mm -hmm. and also with me learn how to manage a website, mm -hmm. it will allow, if I bring it to my other groups, we can make a Facebook page so that other people, other people out there can see what we are accomplishing. Okay, and Ms. John Baptist, what organizations are you a part of? I am in the group U4 Change, mm -hmm. Ruzo Central and South District U Council. And what did you learn at the Council, National Youth Council office that you can now take back to your organization? I learned that we could edit our advertisements to put up there so other people may see it and they would want to come to our, our groups. Okay. What um have you what uh, okay one second is this something that you are plan on doing in the future we know that it was only a two-week thing and you were all were working with telecommunications officer and you all learned so much i'm hearing that you are saying that you all plan on bringing back what you learn as telecommunications officers and media personnel and I'm seeing in front of me two PROs, two future PROs and publicity officers. Is this something that you are, go are going to continue in the future? Well yes, I'm planning to continue to volunteer because I see it helps me a lot. 
And help to tell us our mission, but this is not something you plan to continue doing. Yes, I am going to keep on volunteering because I can see that it will help me later on in future mm -hmm. in my work skills and meeting other people. Okay, I'm hearing these positive things. And uh, we know that viewers at home, especially the young people, are sitting there and wondering, hey, why should I volunteer? We know that you're not getting paid for it. What am I going to benefit giving up my free time volunteering for society? What message do you, do you want to give the young people out there to encourage them to come volunteer? Ms. Roberts. Okay. To the young people out there, mm -hmm. if you're not volunteer, those volunteering, you should start now. And those who are volunteering, continue. Because don't think that because you volunteer and you're not getting money, that's everything. If you volunteer, you are exposed to different things which can help you in the long run, depending on what you are planning to become in the future. So I, I want to tell you that you should continue to volunteer and those are not start because it helps you in the long run. Okay, and thank you very much. And I would just like to encourage you yourself to keep up the enthusiasm and keep up the spirit. And like you say, you're going to continue and I expect to work with you in the future. And Ms. John Baptist, what message do you yourself give the young people out there? Young people, to young people out there, I am telling you to stop being on Facebook. You don't have to stop or be stop interacting with people, but go out there, volunteer and see what you can practice and show off your talents, meet new people, find new skills. Just keep on doing that. Or if you're not, start because it helps you in the future with your work. Okay, and again, the same message I gave to Miss Roberts. Continue the, with the good work and encourage your friends to go out there and volunteer because like you all say, volunteering will eventually help them in the future. Volunteering gives people, help them develop their, their skills, they help them develop their self, place them in different situations and help them get opportunities themselves. Thank you for tuning in to the Youth Ball segment, the Let's Talk segment of Youth Pulse. Good evening. Thank you, Ms. John Baptist and our guest. The young ladies who you just saw have been volunteering with the NYCD on their Easter break and have really been learning a great deal. The NYCD is keen on encouraging young people to volunteer as we see it as a way to help develop our leaders for tomorrow and help them discover their skills and talents. And while mentioning discovering skills and talents, we have our star in youth for this week who took herself on a very interesting journey with her natural talents and self-motivation. Take a look. Hello. I'm Nicole Mawson and I'm a model by profession. I had a passion from the age of five and I started pursuing this career at the age of 20. What motivated me? I knew there was something different about me. Before I was born, my mother had a love for fashion and she would look at magazines and she decided to take a clipping of the famous model Naomi Campbell. She always wanted a little girl and that's what she got. She always told me from her youth that I looked a lot like her. I had some resemblance of Miss Campbell. At the age of 16, she handed me this catalogue because she realized that there was a passion that I had for fashion. I decided to pursue it. Looking around in Dominica, I found no avenue to express my passion or the burning desire that I had inside. So I started to bring it forth in my attire. I created my own style. People would think I'm mad because of how I used to dress, but no, it's just my own style. I started off dancing. It helped a lot in the fashion industry because I got to use my hands and my legs and I had to do all the stretches. So when it comes to walking, that's where the grace came from. My experience so far. I started off with Dominica's Fashion Week, where I got the pleasure of working for Caribbean designers. Then I participated in Dominica's Next Supermodel. I did not emerge the winner, however, it did not stop me. From there, I went to Europe and just walking through and getting the feel of the place, it also landed me my one of my first international gigs where I worked with a boutique, ODT, and I did my first professional shoot. I went back to the Caribbean still with the desire to want that wanting more desire. I did not want to just stop there. I wanted to go much further. From there, my first year that I started to push this, 
I participated in St. Martin Fashion Week where I got the pleasure to work with celebrity designer Andre Soriano and got photographed in his designs as well and did my first feature in an international magazine, Fashion Odds. I made a lot of friends there, lasting friends that would further help me in the industry. From there I went to Anguilla where I participated in Anguilla Fashion Week and graced the cover of Design Anguilla Quarterly Magazine. From there, I moved on to Barbados, where I participated in Barbados Fashion Week and get the clothes to show for designer Charles Dejust. And to top it all off with this year, I went to New York Fashion Week, where I worked for Victor Luna. It was a great experience. I learned a lot and it was not as easy as I thought that it would have been. There's a lot of work that goes through it. There's the up and down roller coaster of emotions, I should say. It's not just cameras, lights, action. No, behind the scene it takes a lot of work, exercise, and yes, you see the smile. With social media only see the smile, but they don't see the hard work that goes into it. Constantly exercising, eating right. You're going to a casting. When you walk into a casting, you see a lot of beautiful models, and you tell yourself, you start doubting yourself. I start doubting myself, and I'm so self-motivated at times. And you look around, you say, Will I make it? Will I not make it? You walk in front of the casting director, which is the most anxious moment of your life, hoping you'll get a yes, making sure you, doesn't, you don't falter. And to come in out from that casting and feel, yes, I did the work job well done, or nervous or waiting. It really is a roller coaster of emotions. From my New York experience for Fashion Week, I remember going through it and having to lift my head up high, looking around and seeing all the beautiful models as myself, but never doubt myself. I got the honor of working for designer Victor Luna and several other shows in there as well. I got the pleasure of going to a fashion for relief show hosted by my fashion idol, Naomi Campbell. I remember looking at her walk in front of me after looking at the pictures and YouTube videos for so many years turning to my left, celebrities on my left and celebrities on my right. And I felt that's where I was supposed to be. That's what I worked so hard for. That's what I'm working towards too. And I don't want it to just stop there. My encouragement to you all, it's not impossible. People will, sometimes when you go into the industry, I remember when I was going to the industry, a lot of persons told me, are you sure you're going to enter into there and you don't change? you don't become anorexic or you don't start being a drug user or something like that because of the pressure that the industry entails. I entered the industry as Nicole Mawson and I plan to leave the industry as Nicole Mawson. If you're, you're strong-willed, you're motivated, believe me, it's not impossible. I know I am the living proof that it's not impossible. I had plenty of people tell me, Nicole, I don't think this is right for you. Nicole, I don't think I see you much further than that. No, it's what you love, it's your passion, work towards it, you will get it. My encouragement for all the aspiring models out there, it's not impossible. You work hard, you exercise, you eat right, and research. If you love it, research about it. Look online, that's what the internet is for. Look for shows, participate in shoots. And it's also good to invest in yourself if that's, what, if that's what you really want as your career choice. Believe me, getting in, in, into the industry was not easy. I remember using my own experience, walking into agencies with my portfolio and being told no. Not because I don't have what it takes, but because of my skin color. Dark skin models also need to know to love the skin you're in love yourself and you are beautiful you would hear a lot of no's where you would start doubting yourself and thinking and maybe i don't look right or maybe i should do this or maybe i should lose my weight or maybe i should cut down, or maybe i should just give up no you would hear a lot of no before you hear a yes that's where self-motivation comes in pray have prayer have a faith and believe in god Believe me, I would, I would never do it just on my own. Thanks to God and thanks to a lot of people who believed in me. That's why I've gotten so far. It's not just one man show, Nicole Mawson alone. There are times I would sit down and I would cry 
and I would tell myself, why didn't I make it there? Why am I hearing no? But I did not stop. If you push and you push hard, you will get a yes. And then that sense, that sense of pride, that victory that you feel. With me, it's like a dream come true every time I walk down a runway. It can be a small show or a big show. It still feels the same way. I enjoy doing it and just walking down give me that sense of satisfaction, that self-pride, that yes, hard work actually pays off. Believe me, it does. So don't give up. Even though you hear you know, still try. Poof, there's always a light at the end of that tunnel. Nicole, we are extremely proud of how far you have pushed yourself and wish you the best as you continue to put yourself and your country on the map. I know some people look just to hear what Marco Wije has to say. Well, here is Marco Wije with your weekly advice. Hello, hello, my name Marco Wije and I'm here to motivate you. That's right. Now, I know you want to be successful. In fact, most things we do is to be successful people in society. Well, I have a little trick for you. You know, when I was growing up little girl, my father always used to say, hard work, buy ticket to fancy things. Yes, hard work. You want to play with your friends, go out, have fun and sleep late at night. But remember, be focused, stay focused. Because Longfellow says, the height by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight. But they, while their companions slept, were toiling upwards in the night. So remember, Makuje tell you, hard work, buy ticket to mm, fancy things. Again, thank you, Marco Wije. We have come to the end of this week's episode of Youth Balls. Thank you for staying with us through this program, and we will bring you another episode next week, Thursday at 6.30 p.m., and then a second viewing at 9.30. Youth Balls is brought to you by the National Youth Council of Dominica in collaboration with the Government Information Service. I was your presenter this evening, Prisca Julian. Have a good evening.